Hey y'all, my name is Sarah and this is my floss tube, Sarah Stitches. Today is, um, oh my goodness, um, Monday, I just don't know the day, um, June 3rd, <laughs> I mean I should. I just want to welcome everybody and just thank you so much for taking time out of your day to evening, day, morning, whenever it is that you watch, for um, tuning in and watching. Um, and I hope that, you know, that y'all enjoy my videos and you, and you like the content. And please subscribe if you do. I would really appreciate it. Um, it's been a long time. I know. I just, um, y'all, it just got away from me. Just a real quick little update. And then I will save the majority of it for the end because I know not everybody is interested in it. But if you are new here, I live in Southeast Arkansas. And just like everywhere else, I, uh, all these other floss tubes I watch and I see, it is hot here. Oh my goodness, y'all. It is so hot. Now, today was better. We had quite a storm roll through. Um, my mother-in-law actually had a little small tree blown over. We had um, just some limbs in the yard, nothing major. But, um, but yeah, you know, you get those. This time of year, we get um, afternoon thunderstorms. But this one was pretty real windy and so it's not as bad today as it has been we've had um heat index of uh, heat advisories for several days last um this past weekend and last week we were our heat index values were triple digit and um you just don't want to go outside you just go out and you just automatically start sweating and when you add that humidity in it just makes it it's just stifling you, you it's just unbearable you know, it is so funny because I have, I have dogs and they love to, uh, one of them, he has made it his job. He's got some German Shepherd in him and he has made it his job to guard um, my, our house and surrounding houses. Now, we, he is in a fence, but you know, that doesn't bother him. But he, he patrols the yard and y'all, he hasn't even been working. He has been staying in during the day. Now in the evenings, now this time of evening, he's ready to go out and get back to work because y'all, he takes his job very seriously and um, barks at, you name it, loud trucks, um, squirrels, other dogs, um, rabbits. Um, we, our next door neighbor has a dog and they let her out every evening and every day, it's like the first time they've ever seen her. So you know it's hot when he's not wanting to go out and work and then my other one loves to play fetch and he's not even wanting to do that during the day. We, we play in the morning and in the evenings. And so, but also um, one reason why I haven't been filming is and um, for people that have been tuning in and, and know what's going on, both grandbabies are here and they are both healthy. Moms are doing great and it's just, um, that is where most of my time has gone. So, but I will give more of an update towards the end for um, people that, um, you know, are not interested. They don't have to listen to it. But I do thank y'all for watching and always asking and commenting about, you know, my family and things like that. I, I like that. So, with that, I will move on. Um, let's see. First, I want to start off with, and y'all, I got a lot to show and talk about, so this might be a little bit of a longer video than normal. Um, I guess it's what happens when you don't film for a month and a half, right? But um, anyway, I've got some new floss tubes that I've been watching and really enjoying, so I thought that I would uh, tell y'all about them. The first one is, um, I can't think of the girl's first name, but her channel is um, Tex Lily. I'll, I'll put it down here in case you're not, a, um, it's Tex Lily, T-E-X-T-L-I-L-L-Y. -L -L but she is from Louisiana and she is brand new to floss tube. I think she's only got out maybe two videos, if I'm not mistaken, but um, very, uh, very much a natural at the video making and um, I just enjoy it. She always has a lot to show, working on, and um, she's always, I, she's very informative of, of what she's stitching on and plans, and I, I feel like she's very organized. And so, um, I do enjoy her channel. I do also have been watching, um, these are two friends that film together. They're called the Lone Star Stitchers, 
And so um, they're out of Texas. <laughs> and so um, and, uh, they have, um, between the two, they always have a lot to show and some really good FFOs. I really, um, I like how they do their finishing. Um, they've got some really good FFOs. And then I've got one, um, the 14 count Ada girl is, um, you know, by her title, you know that she's just um, um, stitches on 14 Ada, 14 count Ada. But she and her husband, they, they have an RV. And I don't know if they do this full time or if they do it part of the year. I'm not exactly sure what the schedule is. But I know right now they are going to different areas of the country and basically um, living out of their RV. I know the last video she put out, they were in, um, I think Colorado, somewhere in Colorado. So that's kind of interesting to see where she is. And um, I know she's also going to um, any place that they go where there are some cross stitch stores that she will be um, talking about those and um, going in and possibly making videos. So I thought that was pretty interesting. And then another brand new one, um, and I also uh, really enjoy her channel. It's called um, Homemade by Sarah W. And her name is spelled with an H. Um, mine is just S-A-R-A -A, and she has an H on hers. But Homemade by Sarah W. And um, She's another one of these that just seems to get a lot done, very informative. I just, her, um, you know, videos are just kind of relaxing to me. You just, so, um, so go check out those videos if, um, if you are, um, you know, f trying to find somebody new to watch. And also, okay, so with that, I will move on to my, um, I've got some FFOs and I've also got some, non cross stitch crafts that I have been working on and have done. And so, um, so I will move on to that. I will start with my FFOs first. And so my first one is, um, now that June is over, <laughs> but I did stitch June monthly sampler by, I think it's Country Cottage Needleworks. And y'all, you know, I know, I, I sat here on my channel and I said, I'm not gonna stitch those. I don't care for them. I don't enjoy stitching them. <laughs> and I'm showing you what I stitched. Um, but I will say this, I think this one is very cute. And I already had it, I did not buy it. And so I was like, just go ahead and stitch it because um, I do like this one. But I will say, looking at it through my camera, it's so funny because these are strawberries, not hearts. They look like hearts. <laughs> you can't, my green on this fabric is just not showing up with the hearts. That is so crazy. And those are lemons. In person, they do show up a lot better. Um, but I did change my strawberries and watermelons to more of a red. Uh, it was called for um, cherry tomato which the one I had was more pink than red. And I wanted my strawberries and watermelon to be red because to me, a good ripe watermelon is nice and red. And um, same with the strawberries. So, um, but I did enjoy this one. At first I was just gonna stitch it from here up. And then I got to looking at it and I thought, well, just go ahead and finish it. And cause it just needed something at the bottom, but it barely fit in this frame. This is stitched on a 14 count Ada that I coffee tea dyed. I wish that is so, but one thing I was really proud of, you can't really tell it, but I, um, maybe get up closer. It's just like the green has disappeared. That is just crazy. Um, let me check, did I stitch the green? <laughs> that makes me wonder. <laughs> it's there, you just can't see it. I should have. I wish now I would have noticed it and I could have changed, made it darker, but oh well. Um, but I'm really proud of my French knots. I think they turned out really pretty good. So yeah, I just, but I do, I, I love this. I think this one, to me, this one just screams summer. This is just summery to me and I love it. So there's that one. My, um, Second FFO, this is the only other F, no, I got one more. 
none of them are patriotic FFOs. I will have to, um, I don't have any new ones, but I will, what I'm going to do in my um, intro is put some of my previous patriotic FFOs. Um, but this is my next FFO. And y'all, I am so proud of this one. I think it is so, so stinking cute. I just love it. What I did was, I like to watch, and I think I've mentioned it before on other videos. I like to watch a lot of these DIYers on YouTube. And you can really get some good finishing ideas from them or just general crafts that you want to make. And one lady I was watching was doing crafts with tin cans. And y'all, this is just a can of, I think this was a larger can of some enchilada sauce. We were, I was making enchiladas one evening. And um, I know it's it's not the regular size can like you would get your um, Campbell soups in. Um, it's bigger than that. But all I did was, is I took it out. My husband has a, um, one of those vice clamps, I guess that's what you call it. But anyway, it has a handle and you can twist it. And so I squeezed the bottom of it together. Now I know in the video she showed where she had taken a hammer or a mallet, something like that, and had um, made the, you know, squish the bottoms together. And so, and that's it. And then I did sand the can so that my paint would stick to it, but I just distressed it, painted it white and distressed it. And this stitched piece is from, um, don't look at my flower. I'm not good at flower arranging. I've got to figure out something better, but um, I just wanted something in there. But this is actually from um, Stitching with the Housewives. This was her Honeybee Farms. I think it came out last year. It was one of her tear tray tidbits, I believe. But I did not stitch the words at the bottom. So, and then this is on 14 count Ada that I had, I think it's apple green. And I think I put some coffee tea dye over it. And um, I left a lot of the motifs out that she had some more stuff up here, but it's called Four Colors. And so what I did was I just took some um, black and white check fabric that I had and I lined it with some interfacing. And y'all, I struggle with this interfacing. I don't, I mean, I read the instructions. It's just like it never wants to stick. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know what she's barking at. Um, but, um, the, um, I burned a hole in it, <laughs> but, um, and then what I did was I just sewed my piece on and then I tried to fray the edges. Yeah, I promise nobody is killing her. I know it sounds like it. I, I don't, I don't know what, what's, I don't know. If she's wanting to play and trying to get the other dog's attention. So that's my female. And she does that when she's wanting the other dogs to play with her. And she's going to come back. Come here. Come here, girl. Come here, Leia. Come here. Let me see if I can't get her to come back here. She, she I don't think you'll be able to see her because she's not going to, she's not one to jump up my lap. Come here, girl. Come here. Come see me. Come see me. Come here. Come here. Uh, come here. Come here. She's, I'll just, come here. Come on. You might hear her tail hitting the floor. No, she's leaving now. <laughs> I thought if I could get her to put her paws on my legs, maybe you could see her. Cause she's a good sized dog. I can't pick her up. <laughs> but anyway, but I do love how I, it finished, but I finished it. How I, um, but what I did was I've got these little bitty magnets. Excuse me. We just had supper. Um, and y'all, let me tell you about my magnets. Oh my goodness. It's, it's funny. I had ordered, you know, I like to order from Timu. And um, they are, they've just got just tons of stuff on there. You can easily just get carried away. And um, I had seen in there, I was just looking at all, all the stuff they sell for crafts and stuff like that. And um, they had magnets. And I thought, oh, magnets? Well, let me try these out. Because, I mean, you know, I could get 50 for like, I think they were like $2. And, you know, the picture was so deceiving. And it's my fault. I should have read the description. But here is <laughs> its little magnets. I, I need to find, well, let me tell you what. This is, this is them right here. 
as you can see, look how little that little magnet is. And it came in a little, it came like this. And so I was, I just died laughing when I saw it because you know, you just take your chance. But I will say this, they're very lightweight. And for something like this on this can, it works perfect because it's not weighing it down and it, it really does stick to it. It's got a good hold. And so it, it really works good for something like this. So, but that is also my husband did drill some holes in it and I just took some jute twine. And so I will hang this up in August because in August I will put out my sunflowers and my bees. And so I know a lot of people have already decorated with their bees, but I'm going to wait. But I love this. I just, this is one of my favorites. And I can also for different seasons, just put new stuff up there. So that's, that's my plan. And I know um, they do do um, Stitching with the Housewives. It has a barn, I believe, like this for every season. So that might be what I do. Or the truck. They have a, um, which I will show what I finished, how I finished it. But it's, I just loved how it turned out. I was um, really proud of that one. And then my last um, FFO is another Stitching with the Housewives. And I believe this was um, Honey Delivery, maybe? I'm not sure. But um, but this is, I just made it into a little pillow. I did, this is on a, um, just a 28 count white. And I changed up all the colors. I had seen somebody on Instagram change their colors to this, and I loved it. It kind of goes more in line with the um, Primrose Cottage Stitches beads. And so this is my back. And then I've got, I just glued some root rack. And um, I think it's really cute. I'm really proud of it. So, um, and I know they do these for every season. I know she had put, there was some motifs up here. I left a lot, quite a bit of motifs off of this one, I believe. But um, I filled this one. This was one of my first ones to use the little polyfill pellets. And I um, I do like the feel of it, but I need more in there. I, you know, because I do it where you've got the hole in the back. And I was scared to put any more because of the hole. I was, you know... I wasn't being smart about it. And so I was just like setting it up. Really, I could have laid it down and filled it up that way. And it would have been a lot better. But next time I will put some more in it. But um, uh, um, I do like the feel because it is a little weighted. Just not enough. But this is my last FFO. Oh, and this fabric right here. Isn't that cute? It came from Hobby Lobby. And then the little B was one from, it's a button set that um, I got from Primrose Cottage Stitches. And so that's it. Now my other little projects I've been working on, they are um, just some things that I did that I thought some of y'all might be interested in seeing. The first one is that I made, and I got the idea from a lady on Instagram she had shared her watermelons that she sewed. And when I saw them, I was just like, I've got to make some. And y'all, they're really simple. I um, I will link the video below because actually the lady that, she's a YouTuber, she's a, a crafter on YouTube, and I watch her. And so when I saw that who it was, um, I went and found her video. So I will link the video below where she makes these because she does show that you can glue these together too. You don't have to sew to be able to make these. Now I did sew them, but, um, and then they're just filled with polyfill. And then I just use some black buttons to embellish it. And then just, you know, put some little, um, just a little, um, scratch some material and made like a little bow. And so, and this is my back. And I just, I had the best time making these. I think they are so cute. I can't wait. To, I want to make some more for next year. But that's another one. And I have a little bit of one, little bitty one. Isn't it cute? And what I did was, these go in my little 
shelf tray. I don't, I don't know the official name of it, but um, I bought it from Chantel, um, Chantel at 141 Design Company. I think she originally made them for the um, hands-on designs. Her newest little, little um, she's doing for the seasons. Well, what are the plaid? Mad for plaid series. That's it. And so, um, but I'm using them also for other things. I'm, I'm putting other finishes on it. And um, it looks real cute with these little watermelons in it. So, um, so that was one thing that I've worked on. The last are all patriotic. I had gone, I am a member of, I think I've mentioned it before, um, in our, our county extension club. There's all different, you know, there's more than one club. There's probably about five or six clubs all total, and I'm a member of one. And they had a county-wide workshop where all the, they do this once a month, and um, you pay a little bit of money, and you go to the, um, they have them at the main library, and you go to just a, a county-wide workshop. And I was able to go. I normally am not able to go because I'm at work. They're normally during the week in the mornings, and so I'm not, I miss out on most of them. But this one I was able to go to, and that I was so glad because they were making these, it looks like one of my buttons coming. No, it didn't. These little patriotic flags on these um, piece of burlap. And um, it was so much fun. I really enjoyed it. But this was mine that I did. And you just, you know, you take the blue and red, white, and blue buttons and you make a flag. And we just used hot glue to, to glue them on the burlap. But I made mine into a pillow. And I just lined it with some red felt. And um, then uh, this is my back with just some fabric that I had. Now this is actually a blue jean, piece of uh, old pair of jeans that um, I cut into a star. And I have some um, Wonder Under, is that what it's still called? It's a heat bond that uh, I made it like a, a patch out of it. And then I glue some rack, rack on it. And so I think it turned out really cute, but I do have to find a way because it, you know, it wasn't too bad really, but some of my burlap, what started to unravel in the stitching. So that's one reason why I glued the rip rack on to, to hold it in so it wouldn't unravel. But I think the rip rack looks really cute. It really needed it anyway, so. But I've just got it stitched with, um, filled with some polyfill. Actually, what I use is I've got some old pillows, and so I just I just use the stuffing of the pillows. But I can't wait to put this out with my patriotic decor. I think it is so cute, and we had um, a whole lot of fun making them. I was so so glad I got to go to one anyway. Maybe next summer because the next one they do, I'll be back at work. So um, I go back um, the end of this month, and so. Um, I'll be at work, so hopefully, maybe next year I'll get to go to some. And then this is my little flag pillow I made. All this is is um, those flags that you buy in a little pack. You can get them at, I got mine at Hobby Lobby, but I think you can get them at Dollar General, anywhere. And I just took them off the little pole, little flag pole they come on, and I coffee tea dyed it. And I made it into a little pillow. Just simple as that. And this is another one of those that you can um, also glue if you rather have rather glue. But um, I had a lot of fun with these. These are so cute. And so these will go. I've got another one, and I'm I'm just putting them in my dough bowl. And one more thing, and that's it. This was another craft that I did with my extension group. Now this was my group that we did these, and we made the firecrackers. And I made mine kind of primitive. I just think these turned out so cute. And I just put some, my husband cut these out for us and then he drilled a hole at the top. And so I just used some twine and hot glued it in for the wick. And then I just sanded it real good and distressed it. And I uh, love how they turned out. So these will also go with my um, patriotic decor. So. So that is all that I've worked on that I've got finished to show. So. So with that, I will move on now 
to me I've got some notes. God, it's been so long. I've got to have some notes. Um to my whips. So let's let me make room here. Okay. The first whip, they're not I'm just pulling them out. They are not in any type of order, anything I work, nothing like that. I just, um, I've just got them here. So whip number one is I have worked on um, Flea Market Flowers by um, Lori Holt. This is it. I'm in the group on Facebook, one of the cross-stitching groups with, I think it's SYS 2023. I think it stands for Stitch Your Stash, um, which I haven't really been doing a good job of. Um, but somebody in the group has started a sale with this. And you know, I have, I started this a couple years ago. So I thought, well, let me join in and get some stitches in it. And so, um, and it's going on all summer. I mean, it's, it's, so, so that, you know, gave me a motivation to stitch on it some more. So this is where I'm at. I have completely, I think last time I showed it, I didn't even have this filled in. So I've finished this one completely. And then this one's completely finished. And then this motif is almost done. I just got to finish that flower over here. But this is stitched on, it's one of Lori Holt's fabric. I think it's a 25 count, um, Oh goodness, is it barley? It's one of her um, fabrics and it's all the call for colors. This week I have really realized I have got to start writing stuff down because I'm bad about thinking, oh, I'll remember it, you know, and then I don't. So I've got to do a better job of documenting. Um, but the, I've enjoyed this one. Now this one is one that, um, Depending on what I'm watching, I can't, because to me, uh, there's a lot of details in these little flowers. And so you can, I've got to pay attention to what I'm stitching. And so, um, just depends on what I'm watching on TV, whether or not I'm, um, you know, um, able to stitch that one. And speaking of TV, um, what's everybody watching? I am... Um, watched i haven't watched just a whole lot but i did watch and it's on amazon jury duty that was really good i thought it was um i enjoyed that one if you like the office it's kind of got that format of it and um just really funny i thought it was funny and of course now i'm watching um father brown on um on brit box i love father brown and i don't there's there's several other things that i want to watch but um I don't know. I, I, for some reason, I just can't think of anything really good that I've watched. So, give me some recommendations of what what's everybody's been watching. Okay, now my next whip, and y'all, so excited about this. I did. I wanted to wait till I went through my whips to show y'all this, but guess what I did? Y'all, y'all, y'all gonna be shocked. Look what I did. I made a project bag. Can you believe that? I made a project bag. Now, is it perfect? No, but I still love it. Um, this is just, I got, um, Sandy was stitching with Sandy. We Zoomed one day and um, she she was making some project bags and um, actually made a surprise one for me. And um, I'll show that here in a minute. But, um, so she walked me through it. And y'all, I was, you know, the whole time I'm, I'm you know, I'm doing all this and, sewing it together in my head, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this is just going to be a mess. This is going to be a hot, this is going to be a mess. Um, this isn't going to resemble anything like a, a, a project bag. I was so shocked at the end when it was a project bag. <laughs> now the zipper did give, the most part I had was trying to get the zipper lined up and these little tabs. I did it wrong a few times. And as you can tell here, I marked wrong on my zipper, but this just gives it character, right? And um, I will always know this is my first project bag that I made, but this is the back. 
It's just, um, I got this at Joann's. It was this truck material. It was actually on clearance. The rest of it I had. And I've just got a solid um, inside. I've just got, this is a dark blue. And so, um, I see some of mine didn't catch up here, but that's okay. Material, you know, you, you learn as you go. And so I'm still super proud of it. And so can't wait. I've actually got more material and more zippers. And so I'm very excited to make some more. I'm hoping to get some more made um, while I'm off. But in this project bag is a new start. And it is, oh, I have another whip. I'm a, I have another FFO. Oh my goodness, just a second. Where'd it go? Oh. Oh. Y'all, oh my gosh, I'm just scattered. This is my cross-stitch camp piece. I, I participated in June, and I am going to participate in July. I just, um, I've got to get it together. I know for June, it was Stitch a Bird, and I think July is um, something that grows. And so, but this is mine. This is Prairie Schoolers Prairie Birds, and I stitched the Blue Jays. And um, let's not look real close at how I finished it. Uh, um, I must have been sleepy when I are just waking up tired because it, it's really quite crooked. <laughs> but anyway, I, I put some pom-poms on here. And I really love how these pom-poms look. It gives a, just that look of like, like some of those little wooden beads on it to me. I think it looks really neat on there. But... Um, I just pulled colors from my stash that was close. The only thing I did kind of change up with the birds. I wanted one to be to look more like a male, and then this one's more like the female blue jay um, um, bluebirds. And so I just um, I think it turned out really cute. And I just got this little piece from Walmart in their little dollar spot. It was three dollars, and I think it had something summery on it, but. Um, I think it's really cute. I like how it looks. So, okay, now back to my whips. But I am, I am gonna do July. I've just, I'm gonna take tomorrow um, and tomorrow afternoon probably to get it together. Um, but this is, where's the cover sheet? Here it is. Patriotic Jar Full by um, Stitching with the Housewives. This is one of their tear tray tippets. And this is it. Now, I am not using the call for colors, most of them. There might be a few that are, but I am um, just pulled colors that from my stash. And this is my progress on it so far. I love these little jars. And so, if you are interested in my colors that I'm using, I will be more than happy to share it with you. But that's it. And this is on just a 14 count. Um, I think this was some that I dyed. Yeah, just black Ada. I think it was originally that chalkboard Ada or Witchell. And I really like how everything pops on the black. So I've got some black Rick dye. And I just dyed it in some black. And it worked just fine. So that's my start on that. I think this is, you know, if you just sit and stitch, you get this done. I don't think it's a it's going to be a long stitch at all. It seems to go. I did all this in one night. Well, a night and a half, I think. Because I had to stop. I can't remember. But I did this whole jar last night when I was watching Father Brown. So. And so it's in my project bag that I made. Can't wait to make some more. That was just so much fun. Okay, now that's the one I wanna say for last. Okay. I also pulled out a Halloween whip. And I worked on it's Lizzie Kate's Halloween Rules. That's what it'll look like when it's done. And this is my progress. 
I st I've got one more tombstone head headstone to go, and then I'm going to fill in the words. And the top part will be done. Uh, this is on a 28 count. Um, I don't know if this looks like it's an even weave. That I'm pretty sure I, it might have been a light gray, and I just dunked it. I took a, a darker gray to make it darker. I think that's what I did. But I really like how it looks. So, really happy with it. I've got to get back to work on this. I enjoyed stitching it. I really do. And so, I think I've seen lots of people have it already finished and FFO'd, and it's really cute. Now, the next one is almost finished. I've worked, I've been stitching Patriotic Quartet by Mill Hill. This was a kit. And it, um, and I've got the frame for it and everything. I just got to beat it. So, I've got to get that done. I've never beat it. So, I think that's kind of why I keep putting it off. Um, but this is... This is my finish, which is pretty just like that, I think. But I know the beads will really make it pop. So, it kind of, when I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, well, have I beaded it? <laughs> but I haven't. It looked like it had beads on it. Oh, y'all hear that thunder? It's thunder in here. We got another storm coming in. That means I'll have one, of, I'll have two back here with me. I've got two that hate thunderstorms and will just, just make them nervous. And then two could care less. Doesn't bother them whatsoever. All right, now I've worked on, oh, this one here. Okay, this one is from, I had borrowed a book from a lady um, back probably about a year ago. And she just let me make copies out of it. And it's from, because I've actually found the book on eBay and I've ordered it, so it's coming in. But it's from Leisure Arts and it's 200 Holiday Quickie Designs. And y'all, it was full of really cute stuff. And this was one, it was originally for a sweatshirt. So this black and white copy, but this is what it looked like on the sweatshirt. And so I've kind of just, made it my own. I thought it was really cute. And so I've got to hurry up and get it finished because I can display it. It's almost done. Well, if I leave it like this, it's done. But yeah, isn't that cute? I love how this turned out. I used some color and cotton floss that I'm in their five strand club, um, monthly club. And I used two of their newest ones that they had for July that I thought were just beautiful. Valor Red and um, Shining Sea. These were the two I used. So I like it like this. And, I'm, and I did use Ecru. Ecru is what I used to um, follow. Now I will say the original design, she had like two different blues and reds in each one. It was a lot more detailed. So I just made up my own and just basically stitched it in one color and just made little um, left spaces for what I thought would be cute for the dots. And I think it looks really cute. Now, the original chart calls for stars. So my dilemma is, do I wanna stitch the stars? And if I do stitch them, which I don't think it's gonna take very long to stitch, so I really want to get this one FFO'd. I'm thinking about just making it into like a long pillow. Do I want to use this or this darker floss for the stars? I think either one will look pretty. I'm kind of thinking, I can't, I'm not a very good model here for showing my stitch and I can't get it. I don't know. I kind of think that darker might look good. I'm not sure. But I also, like I said, I like it like that. So give me some input. What y'all think? Uh, 
leave it as or put in some gold stars. And I may not stitch every star because I think there's 12 stars. I might could just do um, six. You know, just kind of space them out, put six. I don't know. I'm not good at, let's see, or five maybe. I'm not good at space and things and a lot of people change stuff the motifs and I'm just too scared to do that I'm scared I'm really gonna mess it up so I don't know or I might could just like stitch every other star I don't know anyway but that is that one which I think is really cute I really and it was really quick it was I stitched on that on a few zooms and found it very, very quick to stitch. Then I've got, um, it came out of nowhere. It was sunny. We had it, like I said earlier today, a pretty strong one came up and it was sunny afterwards and that one came out of nowhere. Um, Welcome to the North Pole by Primrose Cottage Stitches. I'm doing this one and I know the sow. I'm joining in on the sow, but I'm behind. It's, um, but I'm using all the call for floss. I just bought the floss pack. I just love this chart. And my plan is next year is just to stitch this train maybe for both my grandboys, grandbabies. They're both boys. And I just think that would just be a cute little ornament just itself. And these little, all these little motifs would be cute by themselves. There's so much you can do with this chart. And so, um, but I'm stitching it on 28 count mushroom. And this is where I'm at. Like I said, I'm way behind. <laughs> they have started, cause it's going for, I think six months. Yeah. And this first part was June. And now the second part is July. But I've also seen people start from the bottom and go up and I've seen some people start in the middle. So I think it just really, if you're following with them real, you know, what they're doing, then this is July. This is what they're starting for this month. But this is it once again. And I do love it. I just wanna, um, and I will work on, since this is jolly July, I will work on it some more. All right, now I've worked on Midnight Watch with um, Blackbird Designs. And this is a sow that I'm doing with Laura with Stitching by the Shore. And um, we are both stitching it just alike. We're leaving the alphabet and border off, but we're using different color fabric. And we're both using this DMC conversion. And so um, it is really fun to watch mine and then hers and see how totally different they look. Cause she's stitching hers on a deep purple, really pretty. Hers is very pretty. And I'm using more of a gray. And this is where I'm at. I've started, I got those done in the roof. And you know what, I forgot to talk about, um, and I guess I, I forgot because to yesterday and today I did not keep up. But the Nap Time Stitcher on Instagram is having a summer challenge. And so every day you have a different um, challenge. Like one day for this one, it was, and I don't remember what day, this might've been day three, I'm not sure, to stitch um, something with the house. It had like three other things. Um, house, um, let me see if I've got a screenshot of it real quick. I have to save screenshots of stuff so I can remember what I'm doing. And I may not have it on here. I'm not sure. I don't. Let me see. I might could just get on Instagram real quick and see what it is. Okay. Day for the house, it was day three, and it was called Sandcastles. And it stitched, um, stitched something with a house or building. 
And so that was day three. And so this is where I'm at. I do have to put the bats in. I don't know if you can see them, but I just got to fill in the bats and the moon. And then this will all be completely done. Really love how it's coming along. And I believe I didn't do the border. Day one was, I missed day one and I missed day two. Um, I did day three. My um, jars, my patriotic jars was day four because that was catch fireflies and it was stitch something with the insect or jar. And then um, that's it. <laughs> that's as far as I've gotten. And I doubt that I will follow along tomorrow because we've got people, we're going to go to the movies and then I've got um, my kids coming over, but I'll talk about that in a little bit. And I think I just have two more whips. And this one is Teresa Cokitz. I'm in her Patreon. And this is Simple Life. And this is her new um, stitch along that she's got going this year. And I know she has released, I just haven't gotten it yet, the rest of this house here. This part down here, I think, has been released. But I think it's cute. Um, I'm really enjoying her Patreon. She's got some really um, cute patterns that I've saved. I just, I just never find, you know, I have all this stuff I want to start, and I never have time. I don't, I'm always, you know, all these people that can start all this stuff, and I'm just like, you know, where do y'all find the time? <laughs> but that's it. <clears throat> and this is my progress. This is on a either 32 or 36 count that I coffee tea dyed. And it's called Four Colors. But yeah, I'm not very far. But I did enjoy stitching. What I've stitched, I have enjoyed. I just got to get back. And then I had really intended on with that summer challenge with the nap time stitcher, the day it was stitched something with the border, this was going to be my piece. But I think me and my husband ended up, we've been going to some flea markets and stuff. And I think we ended up um, just spending the day out and stuff. And I just, I never got to it. And then this is my last whip. And I have, since I've been home during the summer, I have a um, morning stitch. And I've really been enjoying it. And this has been what I've worked on every morning. And I see what people mean now about you do make a lot of progress on it. I've made a lot. And I would have more if I had not made a mistake and I had to frog some stuff out. But um, I'm stitching on, excuse me, Blessed Assurance by Heartstring Sampler. And I just, this is such a pretty chart. I love this chart. Now I'm not using, excuse me, I gotta get a drink. Um, I'm not using the call for colors. I just pulled from my stash that was similar. <clears throat> but I had to tell y'all what I did. But let me show you my progress first. Look where I'm at. I'm almost finished. I've got two more motifs and I've got to fill in some of these little, like up here, not this one. Um, see right here, these need some fill in. And then this one, um, those need fill ins. And then over here needs some fill in. Little flowers need the fill ins. But other than that, I'll be done. I did change the words to Classic Color Works Black Coffee. And I love how it looks. This is stitched on 28 count mushroom and I just love it. Um, and it's been, this has been every morning, not every morning. Um, <clears throat> there's been a couple mornings I didn't work on it. And there's some mornings I get lots of stitches in and some I maybe just get a strand, you know, not very many at all. But uh, last time I showed this, I believe I only had Blessed Assurance, I think, 
maybe I can't remember if I even had Jesus stitched, but I know I have done all this and starting down here at this border and I've done this flower, this one, this one, and this one. And this is the one I had to take out because let me tell you, this is what I was talking about. I got to do a better job of documenting because I had not, um, I wrote down a lot of my color changes with it. I really did, but I did not this pink. And it calls for Tennessee red clay. Well, you know, obviously that's not Tennessee red clay. And I had it in my bag, but I had used DMC 760. It went in my bag. I don't know if it fell out or if I took it out or what. I can't for the life of me, I don't know what happened. I'm thinking it probably fell out and I saw it laying around, not realizing what chart it went to, and I put it up. I think that's what I did. So when I went to stitch this flower here, I thought, well, I got this Tennessee red clay and just by looking at it, it probably will work. It, you know, it, it would complement that. Well, I was wrong because it's very, it's heavily variegated. And I didn't realize it until I got to stitching it. And I had finished it. And it just, when I looked at it, my eyes just went straight to that flower. Because none of the other flowers are um, that heavily variegated. And it just didn't look right. So I had thought at first, well, I'll just finish it and see how it looks. But I knew I didn't like it. So I took all that out. And, re and I restitched the flower this morning. And I'm really so happy I did. And it was a struggle. There was a couple times I thought I had done run my fabric, but I didn't. And so um, really, I'm glad that I took it out. But what I had to do, let me tell y'all what I had to do. I have the DMC uh, chart, color charts with the actual flosses. So I took, I took this piece here and I held it up by all them pinks until I found it. <laughs> so you better believe from now on, I will be writing down everything. So that way, if it does fall out or whatever, I know what color I used. And that was just because I had on most of them, I had wrote down my, um, where is it? Um, without showing, I'll show you my, See, I had wrote down most of them, except for that one. And there's a few others that I didn't. So I really have got to do a much better job of um, documenting what I'm stitching on and the fabric and the flosses and that kind of thing. So that, that way, if it happens again, I know exactly what I'm using and I can go get it. And so, but that is all my whips. Now, my plans, how many of y'all are going to stitch um, Jolly July? Or are you doing all patriotic? Um, I think I'm going to do a mix of both. I do want to work on um, my North Pole sale, and I've got a few other, um, I might put some whip stitches in some of my whips, and I really would like to maybe get one or two, I don't, I like, okay, I'm going to be realistic at least one Christmas ornament stitched. And I am gonna join in with Laura, and this probably will be my ornament. Laura was stitching by the shore, has got a sow that started um, July 1st, and it's um, a Barbara, I, I believe it's to stitch any Barbara Anna that you've got. And so I liked the one, it's called, I think it's Santa Sleigh Ride. Let me see, I've got it here on my phone. Um, I've just, um, got a picture of it. Sandy was stitching by Sandy, just stitches. Stitching with Sandy. Just stitched it and finished it. And um, it is so cute. Um, I may not have it. Um, I think it, I thought I might have a picture on my phone, but I don't believe I do. I think it's um, on my iPad. But I think it was in the 2019 um, Primitive Punch Needle magazine. 
And it's the one where it's a little small and Santa's flying over the villa, you know, the houses. And um, I'm going to do mine like hers. She dyed hers some, um, hers is um, denim. I didn't have any denim, but I had um, some dark navy, I believe is what it was called. And so I dyed me some fabric. There you go. It's kind of, that's coming across let's see right there that's pretty true right there this lighting is kind of getting weird in here now with the storm coming through and um, but this i dyed this and i think it looks really pretty it's not there we go that's better but this is what i'm going to use i'm going to iron it i had ironed it but um anyway so um i'm going to stitch that so that will probably be my ornament and with my with laura stitching by the shores so and um, I'm also, I was watching Homemade by Sarah W. this morning. She put out a new video. And in her video, she stitches, and I don't think it's this exact one, but she has the box that you can get from um, Polka Dot and Paisley, where it's the um, distressed wood, the old wood, and it's a calendar. You know, you got the little calendar numbers and dates you switch around and she is doing little Quakers and putting them in it and it is really cute and when she was showing her July one or talking about it and I thought well I have one this was actually a um, subscriber um, well somebody that won a giveaway has sent this to me and so I'm going to stitch this that got me wanting to stitch a Quaker and so I'm going to um, pull some flosses and this will be one that I work on this month. And I also would like to get my July Cottage of the Month started. Now I know some of these I can't finish. I would like to finish this one, but you know, you know, I really thought with me being off work, um, I would just all this time, I just get a lot of stitching done and I hadn't. Um, and I really want to work on Hands-on designs. Um, it's a year in the chalk, red, white, and barbecue. But I'm going to do a different version. I don't know if any of y'all remember um, my life with Miss Flossie. She had some videos. It's been a couple years ago since she's filmed. But she is starting to pop up on Instagram a little bit more here and there lately. But I had saved this to my phone, her color court, um, change that she did and I thought it was really cute I think she had changed to bar one of these is red red white and blue maybe this is blue I don't know it's really cute what she did so I'm gonna do that and that's just kind of a um, you know I don't you know I'm not gonna just it's not wrote it's not stitched and sketched in stone you know it's not written in stone what I'm gonna do so that's just kind of a, a, a loose plan that I want to have for this month. Um, <clears throat> I do have, I want to talk about my swap that I had. I was in Sandy, was stitching with Sandy. with She did for the month of June a bee swap. And a small swaps in this, and it was a bee thing. And this was the one I received. Isn't this cute? I've never seen this chart. I just think it is just so cute. So I can't wait to get this um, with my base stuff. And the girl sent me the floss that she used. And I have never used this uh, brand of floss. It's called Threadwork Over Dyed. And this one is called, um, I thought I saw the name on it somewhere, but I guess it don't, okay. But look, isn't that pretty? And then Weeks Dye Works, Bee's Knees. And then um, Queen Bee by Classic Color Works. Now the one I sent, I will put a picture here. I stitched the, um, from Pumpkin and Pinkard, her one, I think she put it out last year. It was the um, Bee Alphabet Sampler. And I just finished it in a flat, white, a little flat, and a finish in a frame. And I had some, I found at Hobby Lobby some little um, honey dipper 
And so I stained it and put on it with a little bow and I was really pleased with how it turned out. I was late getting it out because um, I had a little mishap. I would originally stitched something else and um, lost it. Can't, I still, to this day, cannot find it. And so um, I had to st I stitched that one up really quick, but I, I, do, I was very happy with how it turned out. And so, um, and then it was right in the time when all the babies, my two grandsons were being born. And so I was just a little late. So I hope the lady likes them that got it. But, um, so that's my swap. I do have just a little bit of a haul. Um, I was speaking of some stitchy kindness. Some, this is the bag Sandy surprised me and made me. And it's made with Teresa Cogat fabric. Isn't that pretty? So I will probably put my Quaker in this. <coughs> so I think that's so pretty. I think I'm gonna shut my blind because it's really getting dark out there. <laughs> just a moment. I think it's just, um... that might help with the lighting. <laughs> okay. So that's that, um, and a little bit of a haul. Not, I have some more, but I've put it up. So I had gone to the Shepherd's Needle and I'd gotten, um, I got this book from Little Stitch Girl, Proud to be American. It's got some really cute star, um, charts. So I got that one and I got some um, fabric. I got some 40 count fabric. I can't wait to try it. Um, and I, I kind of looked through one of their magnifiers that they have, and I think I'm going to be able to use it, but let me tell you what they had and this, I can't wait to do this. You know how, um, country, is it Little House Needleworks and Country Needleworks? They both have those series with all the different charts. Like you got the hometown series, the fall on the farm. I've got Santa's village. There's numerous nutcracker. Well, what they had done, and it was up when you first walk in the store, um, I saw it and it was framed. They had stitched um, the um, the Christmas one with the farm motif that has the quilt in it. Can't think of it right off the top of my head right now, but it was all the um, the farmhouse look stuff. You know, like it had the cows and the horses and all that. And they had stitched it 25 count one over one. And I'm gonna tell you that is how I want to do mine now. And I do, I'm gonna, I have started hometown and I am gonna do those separately, but I think I'm gonna restart my Santa's village and I'm gonna get some 25 count and um, stitch it one over one. And you could get the free border off their website. Border. But I'm telling you, it was perfect. It was the perfect size. It wasn't too big. It wasn't too small. And um, so I can't wait to get some. Um, I've just got to get some. I haven't gotten it yet. But I just thought that was, that was, and I would have never thought of that until I saw it stitched up. And it, it really, um, that's one reason why I like going in there because you can just learn so many new things and you see things that there's been times when, you know, when you see the chart, it doesn't really catch your eye until you see it stitched. And then it, you know, your, your mind completely changes on it. And so, um, so that is one thing sometime before now and first of the year I will be doing. Um, and I also got, um, Brenda Gervais, um, August wordplay. I got that one. And I think that was, and I had some flosses, but that might have been all that I got. I can't remember. I've put them up. But I did get on um, justcrossstitching.com supplies, justcrossstitchingsupplies.com. They were going out of business. And I did catch a few things, not many. I kind of got, it was really picked over when I got on there to look. But I did get some fabric, and they're just small pieces. This is 32 count milk chocolate linen by Witchell. I've gotten um, mushroom um, by Swagart. And this is a 28 count linen. Like I said, they're, these would be really good for just ornaments, I believe. This one is um, cream. 28 count, 
28 count cream by um, Witchell. Swigart, I'm sorry. And this one I think is so pretty. And this one's by Witchell. This is 32 count star sapphire linen. I hope that's not really loud for y'all, but I'm almost done. I don't want to have to redo this. It's taken me, I got out of practice. It's taken me several times. And I wanted to talk about this freebie. I saw it on, um, so I was on Wednesday. She was showing it. And it's car, heart case exemplar works. Hearts case exemplar works. Beehive sewing kit. And y'all, this is all free. And she has all the instructions on how to do this. I know um, Lorraine, I believe is her name. She, has, she is stitching this one. And it is so pretty stitched up. So I will try to leave the link down below, but just lots you can do with this. So, so cute. Oh, I think I'm having a um, hot flash. <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm sweating all of a sudden. Okay, now, to move on now to my, I think I've got, that's everything that I wanted to show. I'm going to do my giveaway and then um, talk about my life update real quick. And so for last month, the giveaway that I, the chart I was giving away was Eat, Sleep, Stitch by Cherry Wood Design. And the winner for this is Edith McClannan. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, I will put your name below, but congratulations. I hope that you enjoy this. I think it is really cute, and so um, I hope you enjoy it. And please, I will put my email in the description box. So please um, email me and give me your address, and I will get this in the mail to you. Okay, so with that, I will just real quick give a life update, and then I'm going to move on to books. Um, what I've... Um, Let's see, like I said in the beginning, both babies are here. They're both boys. Carson, my daughter's baby, was born on June 1st. Um, we, it was a long day. She, he was born in Jonesboro. And um, let me tell y'all, the hospital there, what they do, because the labor and delivery waiting room is on a different floor. It's like the floor below. For whatever reason, I don't know why it's set up that way. I do know they built a new wing, and I, the, they said that they might be already in it now, where it would all be on the same floor. But um, but when she had him, it was two different, you know, labor and delivery was on one floor, and the waiting room was on the, the floor below it. They um, So when the people were in the waiting room, because, you know, you just can't come right out and tell people, they, um, they put, they piped. They send music to the waiting room, and you know when a baby is born, and it is the neatest thing. I didn't know that was what they were doing. I was I was in the room most of the time with my daughter, but the doctor came in and was going to start doing some, I guess, needed to examine her, and they were um, moving her around and all that, because she was in labor for a long time. Um, so I thought, well, this would be a good time for us to go get us something to eat, because we were still... Um, had a ways to go. And so when I got to the waiting room, I was getting my purse and everything together. And all of a sudden I hear this music playing and I look at my husband because I knew it wasn't from the TV and did not sound like a, a ringtone. And um, he was like, oh, they play music when the babies are born. And I just thought that was the neatest thing. So um, by the time my daughter had Carson, though, we were the only ones left in the waiting room. And, um, because uh, she had him um, that evening. And so we knew that that was for our, us, that that was our baby that was born. But um, everything went really good. Mom and baby are doing really good. I'm getting to see him quite often. And I just, I just love him. Um, and then my daughter-in-law, she went in on the 5th to have Joseph. But she did not have him till the 6th. And she also had a very long deliver, labor and um, ended up with a little infection. She's fine now, but she ran a little fever. But um, 
both both babies are just are just wonderful. I'm going to see them tomorrow. They're all coming over tomorrow afternoon for the fourth. And so we are at me and my husband are actually going to the movies that morning. We're going to go see the new Indiana Jones movie. And so um, we're going to do that. And then um, everybody's coming over and we're going to barbecue. Um, we're going to have hamburgers and hot dogs and that kind of thing. So I'm looking forward to that. I get to see both babies. And so, but yes, we've just been really, um, just been enjoying them and just, it's just like everybody told me, there's nothing like it and there really isn't. So, but just, um, I go back to work at the end of July. So, and it just seems like it's just been really busy. I just, I don't remember the summers, but I, I have worked a lot of times my summers. I worked summer school, um, for several years, I would work summer school. So this is the first time in a while that I've had a whole summer off. And so, and it's been nice, I've been enjoying it, but um, I'm hoping um, to get some really good stitching time in the next few weeks. But I do have some projects around here that, you know, I've been putting off that I need to get done. So, um, so with that, that's, that's kind of my life update. And I appreciate you watching and hanging hang around to the end of this. It's a lot longer than normal. And so so with that, I will move on to the books. Um, I don't have a book in front of me, but I will talk about them. <laughs> I've got notes about it. But first of all, I want to apologize for the whole mess with the book club for um, um, Book of Co Cases by Simone St. James. I did read it and I did really enjoy the book. I ended up listening to it, but what I thought, I'm just so sorry. It just, I, I could, I had a hard time getting it read, you know, in the time frame. And then it was just like school was out, babies were here. And it, it just was a lot, it was a lot of things that were going on during that time. And so, um, but if you read it, please let me know what you thought. I would love to discuss it with you in the comments, maybe. Um, I don't know. Um, I'm going to give it a little bit before, I, if I if I do try it again, or I can be better organized about it, and um, maybe actually, um, you know, get it done the next time. But I am sorry for those of y'all that were looking forward to it, and um, I do apologize for that. But please, let me know um, what you thought about it. I I did like it. I like her books. I like the, the thriller aspect of it and the ghost story. Um, this one though, I thought the ghost story at times seemed a little bit more creepier than usual. And it could have been, I was just reading it one night, but it kind of did, I wasn't scared, but it, it kind of creeped me out a little bit. You know, I was like, oh, wait a minute. I might have to put this one down for a few minutes. But I just, I continued reading and then I was fine. But, um, because I am by nature a very spooky, scary person. <laughs> and it just makes, you know, it is kind of funny that I like to read these books that have a little bit of a ghost story in them. Okay, I have read though, and I read this one on my Kindle, I actually read it. The Chilberry um, Ladies Choir. It's by Jennifer Ryan. It's um, a World War II historical, um, and it takes place in 1940s in Europe. And this is when the Nazis um, war a bomb in England. And the um, there's a choir in this town. And I, from my understanding, it was men and women. But since the men have all gone to war, they continue it on with just the ladies. And I think during that time period, it was kind of maybe unheard of because there were several people that did not think that was a good idea. But you follow um, four people, and it did take me a little bit to get used to this because it's done in letter formats. They're all either letters or they are um, journal entries. And so it, it did take a little bit for me to get into it because of that format. But once I got going and I, and I got to know the characters, because that is one thing um, I feel like Jennifer Ryan does is you do get to know your characters. I really, really enjoyed the book. Um, it, um, it was very good. So um, 
I, I really do recommend it. Um, and then the next last, the next one I read, I did listen to this one. I didn't read it. I listened to it. It's Homecoming by Kate Morton. Morton. And this, I would call this a um, historical um, mystery. You, um, it's a dual timeline. It takes place in 1959 and 2018, and it deals with a family family tragedy that happened on New Year's. Um, no, on Christmas Eve in, two th in 1959. And a young girl has gone back to care for her um, grandmother. I've got a dog here. Come here. Let me see if I can't get him up. Come here, Luke. He's usually not scared of storms. I don't know why he's back here. But anyway, um, <coughs> to care for her grandmother. And while she's there, um, pretty big storm and um, the grandmother ends up passing but she starts uncovering stuff about this miss this family tragedy and she's kind of has a um is on the outs with her mother and so um it, it does bring her and her mother back together and so um i really enjoyed this book and this one had a few twists that i did not see coming there was a couple that i was i was kind of shocked by i will say that and so um I wouldn't, it's, it's a mystery. I would not call it a thriller or suspense or anything like that. It's, it's I would call it a historical fiction um, mystery. And so really, I really recommend both of these books. And I'm currently reading, I'll just, um, by Karen White, Flight Patterns. And um, this is about, um, it's a, all I, I'm, I'm in, I think, four or five chapters in, and I am enjoying it. I think there is going to be quite a bit to do with bees in this book. Um, it's a girl that is, once again, estranged from her family, and she is, um, I forget what her actual title is, but she works for, like, a um, one of these um, antique, real, real known, like a museum, maybe, and people bring these um, very rare pieces in and they, you know, like they look into them and they um, see if they're real and how much they're worth, that kind of thing. And a man has brought in this saucer with um, a bee thing, a bee pattern on it. And it's very, the girl's, it's very rare. She's, she's not recognizing any of the books. And then she remembers that she has seen that before at her own home, in her mother, grandmother's home, or grandfather's home. And she's, for whatever reason, we don't know yet, but she had left home and she is not in good with her family. And so now she's had to go back home to see about this piece. And the guys, I feel like there's gonna be a romance between her and the guy because he has come, he is, gone with her and so um but i think i'm gonna enjoy it i really do um so that's that's it that's all that i've uh, done for the last um uh, month month and a half i do thank y'all for um staying this long and watching and um just um oh tomorrow is the fourth of july and i hope that if you live in the united states that you have a, a happy and safe fourth and um, I will, I, um, I don't know when I'm going to film again, but I'm really thinking it should not be as long as it has been. So, um, but I will see y'all.